Now we've discussed the pedostatic instruments, we're going to discuss your gyro instruments, which are the other half of your six-pack. The uh, three different gyro instruments work off of two different systems. Your attitude indicator and your heading indicator both work off an engine-driven vacuum pump. And the turn coordinator, it says on the face of the instrument, DC electric, because this one works off your electrical system. The reason that they do this is so we have a redundancy in system to tell us if our wings are level or if we're banking or not. The attitude indicator has several markings on it. Sometimes there's a different variety of them, but most of them will have a, a short hash and a long hash and possibly another short hash and long hash mark. The short represents 5 degrees pitch up and the long hash represents 10 degrees pitch up. And then the same thing would be true on the bottom part of it. Often you'll have two lines on each side in the uh, ground portion and uh, the second line is the one that we had discussed earlier which is representative of a 45 degree bank. At the top we have um, markings if you're straight up, your wings are level, or if you're banking 30 degrees, 60 degrees, or 90 degrees, and then there's usually two hashes between the 0 and 30, meaning 10 degrees and 20 degrees of bank. Now, how your attitude indicator actually works is there's a gyro in there, and the gyro spins very fast because of your engine-driven vacuum pump. It's the same way that water turns a water wheel. We use air to turn this wheel. And the wheel, or the gyro, is mounted by a, by a, a gimbal system. And it is possible that if you pitched up more than 60 degrees, or correction, if you pitched up more than 30 degrees, or banked more than 60 degrees, that you can knock the gyro off of its gimbal system and then this instrument will tumble and not, you know, sometimes they come back upright and sometimes they don't. You just simply broke the instrument. Um, so one of the errors of this instrument would be excessive pitching or banking. Um, this instrument works by the principle called rigidity in space. If you have a gyro that's spinning really fast, it stays still. Uh, maybe when you were a child you had one of those spinning toy tops where you, you pump the little arm up and down and it made the top spin and as long as that top spin fast enough it would stay upright. So we call that principle rigidity in space and as long as this gyro is spinning fast enough it'll stay the same as the horizon. So the horizon stays still and we actually rotate around it how we see um, the uh, image displayed on your attitude indicator. So the engine driven vacuum pump it uh, sucks air through the instrument and how we know if the vacuum pump's doing a good job is inside the cockpit we look at the suction pump or it may say vacuum pump but it's the same thing and typically uh, during cruise flight the vacuum pump should be somewhere or the indicator should be between four and a half and five and a half which would be the normal reading when your needle's in the green arc now because this is indicating from our engine driven vacuum pump if we have a very low RPMs, for example, when you're taxiing, let's say you're taxiing and you have your RPM set at maybe 1,000, it's likely that the suction gauge would read very low because you're not working your engine, so therefore the vacuum pump's not working much either. Your attitude indicator uh, works off of the very same principle, although the attitude indicator gyro is mounted sideways instead of uh, horizontal, or correction, it's mounted vertical instead of horizontal. It also works off the rigidity and space principle, meaning that it needs to spin fast enough to work properly. And the errors in this instrument would be, of course, excessive pitching and banking because you can knock it off its gimbal. But another error is called gyroscopic precession. Gyroscopic precession, if you remember, was if you have a spinning object that takes on the gyro properties and you apply force in one area, the force applied is not felt until 90 degrees ahead of the rotation. So on your heading indicator, every time you bank the airplane while this is trying to spin, it, it nudges it off a little bit. So they give you a little knob so you can constantly correct it in reference to your uh, compass. So if your compass read uh, zero, 010, zero, then you could readjust your heading indicator to rematch that. So both the attitude indicator and the heading indicator work off of the rigidity in space principle. Rigidity in space.
and both of them are negatively affected by the gyroscopic precession. Um, the heading indicator will keep losing its heading, so about every 10 or 15 minutes, the pilot should always recheck the heading indicator against your compass. The attitude indicator is also negatively affected by the gyroscopic precession because when we're pitching and banking and turning the airplane around, every time we go to bank the aircraft, it might show a slight pitch or a slight descent because the uh, gyroscopic precession occurs when the instrument is spinning very fast and you bank the aircraft on one axis, it's felt on a different axis. Now, the turn coordinator, it is also a gyro, that's how it works, but the gyro is mounted at a slight angle and it works off of the gyroscopic precession. It doesn't really need the rigidity as much to give us an accurate reading. Um, the gyroscopic precession allows the turn coordinator to show us rate of turn or rate of roll. And if we bank the aircraft to your wing is pointing at this little line or that little mark, then that is a three degree per second standard rate turn. We use that standard rate turn anytime we're flying in the clouds or for your private pilot you have to do at least three hours of instrument training whether it's in actual uh, IMC instrument meteorological conditions or you're just flying with the hood or the foggles on but no matter you would always only bank to standard rate turn by looking at your turn coordinator so you may ask yourself well what bank angle does that give me is it always 20 degrees or always 30 degrees no it's dependent on how fast you're going so in your airspeed indicator, if you were flying at, say, 120, and you were going to make a circle, you would have a pretty big radius, so you would have to turn through 3 degrees per second of your 360 degrees. So it would require a pretty decent bank angle, uh, maybe 22 degrees of bank angle to hold that standard rate turn. But if you are only flying at, say, 60 degrees, I'm sorry, if you're only flying at 60 on your airspeed indicator, then the size of your circle, the radius, would be a lot smaller. So you would not have to bank as steeply in order to pass through 3 degrees every second. So if you're flying faster, you may notice that it requires a steeper bank angle to maintain a standard rate turn. And if you're flying slower, it would take less of a bank angle to maintain that same 3 degrees second standard rate turn. So your attitude indicator and headed, heading indicator work off your engine driven vacuum pump and uh, they both work off the rigidity and space principle and gyroscopic precession plays against them. The turn coordinator is electrically driven. It works off your electrical system and um, it works off a of rigidity and space but primarily gyroscopic precession and it shows rate of roll and rate of turn. So these are your gyro instruments.